Hello, hello again, everybody. Zack Attack is here, my Super Bowl 50 video for February 7th, the Super Bowl Sunday of 2016. Alright, um, here's how this is gonna go. I'm gonna review the game. I'm gonna give my thoughts on the game first. Then, thoughts on the halftime show, because a lot of people have their discussions on the uh, halftime entertainment. Um, and of course, I also then give my thoughts on the uh, commercials. Plus, a uh, little retirement news. Although we do not know the future of PFM, I think Marshawn Lynch may have retired during the game. Posted a picture of him hanging his cleats up. So, if it is retirement time for Marshawn Lynch, he's had a heck of a career in the Seattle Seahawks, winning a Super Bowl. Next Super Bowl, the Seahawks defense won out. Against the Denver Broncos. Two years later, the Denver Broncos, their defense, took hold on the Carolina Panthers. So let's get to the game. Uh, my thoughts on uh second least exciting Super Bowl since the Seattle Broncos game. Uh, not much of a blowout as the Super Bowl 48 games. What was it like? 47 to 6? So it wasn't as big of a blowout. But when it comes to the game itself, there's a little bit of highlights. Not much excitement in this game. You know, in Super Bowl 50, you know, 50th anniversary of the Super Bowl, the game was okay. The end time show was probably the worst since the Black Eyed Peas or Beyonce solo performance back in 2013. Of course, I get my thoughts at halftime show in a second. So the game itself was just, yeah. Um... There was some little highlights, a little bit of controversy. Uh, the controversy, of course, involving the field. Of course, Levi's Stadium in uh, San Francisco, California, a.k.a. Santa Clara, California. Uh, there have been some complaints about the conditioning of the field. Uh, there was a players tripping, but the field didn't, I don't think the field did as much damage as, it, as people thought it was. You didn't, like, the field didn't, affect the game as much as people thought it was going to. Yeah, people slipped and stuff on the field. Hell, they had to fix the cleats when Beyonce came out. You know, Beyonce's pivots kind of ruined the tough as well, from what I'm hearing. Yeah, then, yeah, first Beyonce had the blackout in New Orleans, now she's got the cleats thing. Anyway, um, so the field did not, the tough did not affect the game as much. And the other controversy, uh, the play that I think set the tone for the game. Uh, back in Super Bowl 48, the plan that kind of defined the game was the safety against Denver. That um, basically gave Seattle a big edge and stressed the hell out of Broncos. They didn't play as good as the, after that. The play that I think rattled the Carolina Panthers was the challenge that there was a complete pass. That was a complete pass in my mind. They did kind of screw um, the Carolina Panthers with that. Scooby play. It was a good play. He fumbled it. It didn't hit the ground, but then he caught it. It didn't hit the ground. There was a challenge, and it was still ruled incomplete. That was like the only, the only kind of screwiness on the, the only, the, the only close thing to a bad call of the entire game. You know, there's no other bad calls in the game that ruined the game like other games. Um, but, um, that call was like the closest thing to it because it was a complete pass in my mind. But would it have an effect? Did anything in the long run, especially how Carolina played in the game. They had a rough, they had a rough overall game. Uh, one offensive touchdown, people. One offensive, well, actually, two offensive touchdowns. Because there was an offensive touchdown near the end of the game. Um, the longest punt return, like a lot against, a lot against Carolina tonight. You know, they were the number one seed. In the NFC, and I picked Carolina. And I'm a Denver guy too, because I went to Denver when they beat the Pats in the AFC Championship game two years ago. But you've been experienced. You've did not win out. Defense and experience won out. That's what happened with the Broncos tonight. Um, the inexperience and youth of Carolina got them with uh, three turnovers against them. A uh, couple interceptions thrown by Cam, including one. Two fumbles, including a fumble that was returned for a TD by Von Miller, who was the MVP. Because his forced fumbles got Denver in the game. 
Caused that forced fumble. We turned for a touchdown. And, of course, the fumble at the fourth quarter that gave Denver their only offensive touchdown of the game. That was set up by a great block fumble by Von Miller. So, great passes. There were some good passes. And a couple good touchdown stuff with uh, Jonathan Stewart with the leaping touchdown that gave Carolina its only touchdown. Uh, missed field goal. They didn't make one field goal eventually. But, uh, Carolina did a lot, though. You know, they had a lot of opportunities. You know, they got a lot of yards. Like, what, 200 yards thrown by Cam? And he ran a couple. But the off the defense of the Broncos smothered them. Two years ago, the defense of the Seattle Seahawks smothered the Broncos. Smothered them. You know, I mean, like, 38, 38 to 7 or 38-10 to 10 or something. You know, Seahawks just destroyed them with the defense. And Denver knew that. So Denver fired John Fox last season. It really re-upped on their defense. And the defense, in my mind, has saved their asses a lot in the regular season. The offense was off and on throughout the season. And the defense was the only consistent the consistent thing in the entire season. Number one ranked defense in the season. And they dictated the game. Especially, like I said, the turnovers against Carolina, including the two forced fumbles from Von Miller, which made him the MVP of the game. Because of that. Even my dad, we were watching at home with my family. My dad was like, Von Miller got himself the MVP because of those fumbles that he caused. Um, and no interceptions for by Manny. There was a couple of turnovers. I think like maybe two turnovers against Broncos as well, but not a lot. And I even said this when it came to the Broncos. When they won against the Pats, I said, field goals don't win your Super Bowl. Well, they kind of did, because they only scored field goals most of the game. And, uh, and those, those field goals and the defense won out and helped the Broncos get the victory. This is the third Super Bowl win in the franchise history of the Broncos. And after losing in 2010 to New Orleans, and of course, as I mentioned, losing to Seattle in 2014, Payne Manning finally wins another Super Bowl. He gets his second Super Bowl ring and his 200th career win. Uh, he has not said anything about retirement. As I mentioned, Marshawn Lynch did, did retire and announced his retirement tonight. However, Payne Manning, when he was interviewed by, um, by uh, Tracy Woodson from, uh, from, uh, CBS, he's like, are you going to retire? He's like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing my priorities first and uh, take care of my family, drink some Budweiser tonight. He's a humble guy. PFM, Peyton freaking Manning, is all I got to say, baby. PFM. And uh, got the victory tonight, like I said, he got, an he got another one. And a lot of people could say that he's made, he's had a great one, may not be the greatest of all time. Some people may say that, but he is a great quarterback. He had a great game today. He had a decent game. Didn't throw anything bad and stuff. He got the big victory in an okay game. It was like not much excitement in the game. It was like the Seattle game, but not as boring. But in Super Bowl 50, the game should have been a little bit more exciting. The halftime show certainly didn't help. Um, my mind, the second most halftime show ever. Um, of course, when uh, it was announced, of course, that's my thoughts on the game. Congrats to Peyton. And Norwood, punt return as well. Big punt return for him. The biggest punt return in NFL Super Bowl history, 64 yards. That set up a big touchdown for, I think that set up a field goal. That's how, that's how that Denver scored. There's field goals, one defensive and one offensive touchdown. So there you go. Now let's get on to the thoughts of the halftime show. When it was announced that Coldplay was doing the halftime show, I was like, really? I'm a disc jockey and I like music and all. But I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Coldplay was not the best choice. And they proved it. Lady Gaga should have been the halftime show. And by the way, she killed the National Anthem, by the way. She proved that she can really sing. I've seen it live, and she killed it on the, on the, 
there's your anthem. She killed it. I know a lot of people may have the debates on that. Maybe she was out of tune. But I loved it. The outfit was cool, too. But uh, Coldplay kind of lived up to their lack of expectations the halftime show. I like the music. I like the stuff. But they didn't deserve the halftime show in my mind. And they were kind of like spectators. Say Bruno and Beyonce. Uh, they played like short snippets of Viva La Vida. They kicked off the, 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 the show. I like the stage. And it was interesting because they have a good light show, but it couldn't have much of a light show because it's daytime in Los Angeles because of the time zone. You know, mountain time zone. So the stage was cool. The, the graphics on the stage was cool. But that's about it. <laughs> yes, they were playing to a backing track. I think Chris's vocals were live. But yes, Coldplay was playing to a backing track. I knew that, like, there's a reason why they do backing tracks. To be safe, because they don't want to play it live, because if you play it live, you fuck up. It's live, and you're on in front of like the biggest audience in the world. Um, So they have to play it back in track. So they did Viva La Vida, Paradise, I was supposed to play for Paradise, and of course they had to do a new song, Adventures in a Lifetime. I liked it, like the marching band thing, like the like the little flower, like the dancer came with the little flower umbrellas, that was cool, that's about it. Then Beyonce and Bruno Balls came out. Uh, Bruno Mars, when he did his halftime show, he didn't need the Chili Peppers in the end. I thought he needed somebody to help his ass. Guess what? He didn't need any backup. Coldplay needed Bruno and Beyonce. They were the only ones everyone's going to talk about. For why and wrong reasons. Uh, something Bruno's Bruno was lip syncing. Uh, he was singing to a backing track. But his mic wasn't live all the way. His mic was too low. But he did turn his mic up. So he was not lip syncing. So people thought he was, because his mic was so low in the mix. The mix was, I'm a this guy, I like some mixing, and some mix was okay. But I was sounding so by halftime show since the Black Eyed Peas. Um, and by the way, Katie's halftime show was better. And Madonna's. And any other Super Bowl halftime show, besides the Who, are better than Coldplay show tonight. So Bruno came out to Uptown Funk, and then Beyonce came out to a horrible new song. I know some people would have loved to have seen Beyonce come out to an old song, but... Uh, if you want to see Beyonce do old songs in a Super Bowl halftime show, uh, what's the one she did do two years ago? And I thought her halftime show two years ago was just okay. I'm like, I like her stuff, but it's too gangster for me. Now Beyonce's going in the same direction. You know, I'm not going to make you dance. Go be gangster. Because <gasps> my husband. So, I like the dance moves. Like, Beyonce's dancing was good. Beyonce, I think Bruno outdanced Beyonce. And they had a little, like, Little face off in the end, and then Coldplay came in trying to sneak in. And, like the camera position at one point had Bruno and Beyonce up front, and Chris Martin in a little tiny background in the worst photo bomb attempt in the world. And the last song was stupid. I think they should have ended it with Clocks. Because Clocks is the best song. You know, did it, did it, did it. like, can you imagine like the power going off and Clocks? But the last song they did was like, yeah. And on a sour note, uh, a lot of opinions on the halftime. Some people liked it, some people didn't. And I bet you I'm going to be in the uh, majority that didn't like it that much. You know, I like Bruno's portion, and I like Coldplay, you know. And it kind of like in the background. I know a lot of people would have been better. Hell, Metallica would have been better. And Gaga would have been better. Hell, even Luke Boy, I would have loved to have seen a country guy up there. We'll see what happens next year with the halftime show. Like, you can't please everybody. You know, male football fans want Metallica, but here's the thing. NFL appeases to a large audience. Katy Perry last year appeals to an audience. To a very large audience. I said this when Coldplay was announced. Coldplay does not appeal to a mass audience. Especially around the world when people are watching it. They don't appear as much as a Katy Perry would. Bruno and Beyonce appealed to an audience. Coldplay didn't. I know they want to be all rock and roll and stuff. Get like a real band. If you want a real band to play halftime, get Metallica or get Wash if they're not retiring. Or if you want like a more. Hell, Moon 5 would have been better. I think Moon 5 should have been up there. There was one Moon 5, I think they should have done it. So the halftime show was just. Eh. It ain't miss this year when it comes to halftime. I love Katie's last year. Especially Missy Elliott, who did appear in a commercial for uh, Amazon Echo, which was one of my favorite commercials. 
So there goes my thoughts at halftime. And with that little segment from Missy Elliott, let's get to the commercials. Um, commercials will hit miss this year too. There were some fun commercials. There were some disappointments. Uh, most disappointing was definitely Budweiser. Budweiser had some good commercials in the past, especially with the Clydesdale horses. This year, the Clydesdale commercial was disappointing. Um, it was just like a little like blip of them. And it wasn't like sentimental or heartfelt as in the past. Although the Helen Mirren commercial was kind of funny. So Budweiser is kind of disappointed. But Light did awesome. I loved their commercial. The Bud White, Bud Light, Bud White. But uh, did I say Bud White? Sorry. <laughs> but Light Party with Seth Rogen and Amy Schumer. And that was a funny commercial. It could be a lot more funnier, especially with very funny people. He had some cameos from Paul Watt in there, and I did like that commercial. That was a very funny commercial. Probably the one everyone's going to be talking about. Probably, probably my mind, the funniest commercial tonight. Uh, Team Mobile had some good ones. Uh, the Drake one was good with the cell phones. That blonde guy has been in a few commercials. He was in the PlayStation commercials and the recent Booker King. Booker King commercials with the chicken nuggets. Um, so he was in that commercial with the hotline blank charging people. I did like like adding changes, like you don't like changes. I like that. But the funniest thing more was the making like Verizon's ball campaign is getting back in their faces. Sprint parody them in T Mobile for the win, got the victory, making fun of Verizon by having T Steve Harvey saying, I'm sorry. The balls that Verizon's been selling were well, last year's was all. T-Mobile's double up. I didn't make a mistake. Verizon did. That was funny. Now, Steve always got a really, really sense of humor about that. Made fun of this whole infamous Miss Universe clunker. His, bl his blunder. And turned it into a funny commercial. Turning it negative into a positive. And a very funny positive. With that very funny T-Mobile commercial. For the win, Steve Harvey. Um, I also liked um, Hyundai's commercials. Hyundai's commercials were really funny. Uh, the Kevin Hart one was pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of Kevin Hart's stand-up. He's okay, but I liked him in this commercial. With, like, spying on his daughter and his, you know, boyfriend with the car finder set to another one bites the dust. Good soundtrack. Maybe some of the commercials I picked because of the soundtracks. Hyundai likes cream. Not only did they use another one bites the dust on the commercial of Kevin Hart, but also the singing sheep during the other commercial for the Hyundai truck, Somebody to Love. That was kind of a fun commercial as well. And the uh, Wyatt Reynolds commercial. He was Every Man with What a Man by Salt and Pepper in the background. That's kind of a fun commercial too. Uh, other funny, uh, uh, Apartments.com. Wow, that's interesting to have them on a commercial. And I like they're like moving on up, moving on up thing. It was kind of a funny thing with the uh, Jeff Goldblum. I think that is Jeff Goldblum. If I'm, if that is not Jeff Goldblum, that's a good Jeff Goldblum impersonator. Um, because he kind of looks like Jeff Goldblum. If it isn't, because I don't know who that guy is in, that, in those commercials. But uh, he was like up on a forklift with a piano, and he's going on up in his apartment complex, and then he's like, "Is that George and Weezy?" They had a George Washington impersonator and Weezy F. Baby himself, Lil Wayne. That was kind of a funny blip in that commercial. And they're like using all the lyrics as a little jet segues. Like George saying, Fish don't fry in the kitchen. Beans don't burn on the grill. Because they're like grilling some, cooking up some beans on the grill. And then Weezy's like, I got a little piece of the pie. Funny you got a piece of the pie. That was kind of funny. Um, and Snickers one was good too. Um, Snickers last year had a very funny commercial with, uh, and probably one of the few Super Bowl commercials from last year that are still getting regular play with the Brady Bunch. Snickers have always had some very fun Super Bowl commercials with the celebrity involvement. Most famously, Betty White, Roseanne Barr, and last year the whole Brady Bunch thing. With the whole using technology to insert Danny Trehalo in. See with this one with the uh, parody of the famous Marilyn Monroe moment in uh, I think Diamonds All Girls Best Friend. And 
They had like a guy dressed up like Marilyn in a white dress. I don't know who that guy is. Oh, William Dafoe, who was the villain in the first Spider Man movie. And then he ate Snickers and he returned to Marilyn Monroe. And then underneath, you had Eugene Levy as the fan guy, feeling frustrated. Because last year you had like the whole Danny Trujillo was Marsha, Queen Keen, and turned to Marsha again. Of course, Jan was uh, Steve Buscemi. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. They always have that in the end of the Snickers commercials. Speaking of companies, I've always loved some decent Super Bowl commercials. Uh, Doritos had some funny ones too. Uh, they had uh, the baby one. It was kind of like, wow, that was fun, funny. With the baby in the ultrasound, and the dad was eating the Doritos, and the baby popped out because he wanted the Doritos. And then the dog one, the supermarket. The dogs are not allowed in, but they want the Doritos. Uh, call commercials with good soundtracks. You had Artie, who used the Stop Man. I knew that. I, I saw. I don't watch the commercials on the internet before they come out. Because I know that's what they do now. They post the Super Bowl commercials on the internet. That's spoiling yourself. You know what I mean? I don't watch the Super Bowl commercials on the internet. I watch them live on TV. But I knew I read the headlines and know some of the commercials. Like I knew Arnie was gonna use Star Man. That was like kind of a that was like a that was like a heartfelt commercial with the astronaut won the fly again and the Arnie makes him feel like he's in space again. Like I said, set the Star Man. At the end they had the Mem in memory of the st star man. Then you had um, the Prius commercial set to uh, Woody with the Devil by Van Halen. It was a simple commercial, but I don't like that because of that song was used. And I knew that song was going to be used too. And going back to the Snickers commercial, some people are making fun of it saying it's anti feminist. But I don't see that. Politically collect people out there. You don't want to make want to complain about anything. And this is why we can't have nice things. Um, another call commercial that was kind of funny. The Buick commercial with the bouquet toff and the bride going, Oh damn, back him! He all dealt it! That's gonna be afraid. He all dealt she all dealt it with the one-handed catch, and Odell was even in the commercial. It is the only place you saw him in the Super Bowl because the Giants lost their season. And they fired Cock Lachlan, Cochlin. And Eli was there in the stadium watching his brother get a second Super Bowl ring. Um The Skittles commercial was also funny with uh, Steven Tyler with the Skittles statue of himself singing Dream On and bursting the pieces after the pain does the I can't do it. I can't do it as good as Steven Tyler. And I'm a big Aerosmith person. A lot of classic rock. You know, the soundtrack, you know, Queen, soundtrack and commercial, Van Halen, David Bowie, Steven Tyler was in a Skittles commercial, so. Look, that's what I thought. Uh, Coke Meeting one was kind of funny. Kind of a tie-in to the Captain America Civil War movie with Ant-Man, played by Paul Wood, his second commercial appearance in character, took the Coke Mini from the Hulk, and it was like a little chase scene, and Hulk got it, but he couldn't open it, and Ant-Man opened it. That was kind of like a funny commercial. Kind of a fun commercial there. Uh, Amazon Echo was kind of funny. It was after the Coldplay halftime. And it was like Alan Baldwin using this Amazon Echo. was kind of a fun commercial interacting with uh, Jason Bateman. And also, uh, not Jason Bateman, but uh, Jason Schwartzman. Not Jason Bateman, Jason Schwartzman. Because if I would have not corrected myself, I know a lot of people would have commented I mistaken Jason Schwartz. Schwartzman for uh, Jason Bateman. And then you had uh, Dan Marino that for commercial. Like, it was like a fun match with Dan and Alec in that commercial. That was a fun commercial for Amazon Echo, the little sound device. The NFL Super Bowl Babies was also clever and brilliant. Making fun of the Kiss by a World, Kiss from a World by Seal, who was in that commercial with all the. Like, there was like these little blips of the Super Bowl babies throughout the game, and they had like the whole commercial doing, I think it was like the fourth quarter. But they had the entire Super Bowl babies commercial with all Super Bowl babies from the past. You know, I'm not a Super Bowl baby. I think I'm a Thanksgiving baby. Because I was born in August of 88. So I think I'm maybe a Thanksgiving baby. Because I was, my, I may have been conceived during Thanksgiving. But it's not a story for another day. So let's keep going. 
Uh, the ones that were good, uh, KFC, they got news. They got their third Colonel Sanders in less than a year. First, they had, um, I forgot the guy who first played. They had Norman McDonald, who I thought did a good job. And Jim Flanagan is now the new spokesman. And had a little funny commercial to play the, the impersonator game again. Like, that's the thing. When they fire one Colonel Sanders, they have the new Colonel Sanders saying, Oh, there's an impersonator. I'm the real one. And that's what they did with Flanagan, too. And I think Flanagan's an okay Colonel. The accent's good. And he's a good stand-up. Very funny comedian. And I think he did an okay... He's probably doing new, kind of good, okay job in the long run in the KFC commercials. And I think Hyundai had a couple other commercials, too. The, the, the call Heartbeat one as well. It was okay as well. A lot of movies commercials. A lot of movie commercials. Um, Jungle Book. The live action Jungle Book was okay. You had Independence Day. I can't believe they make another Independence Day. There's the thing now. They wait 10 or 20 years to make a sequel for movies. It took 15 years for Zoolander 2. It took 10 years for Inkerman. So it took 20 years for a sequel to Independence Day. And no Will Smith. And then Jason Bourne finally met Damon's back in the franchise. Uh, then the Avocados commercial was kind of funny with the little museum of the future. I think that was that commercial. Uh, I did not like the Michelob commercial. That was, the Michelob commercial was stupid. The, <gasps> like the sound of a pop, the sound of popping a Michelob bottle, bottle like the sound of breathing. That was stupid. The Momot commercial with the beaver and the outdoors. That was okay. Um, Squarespace. That was funny until we found out what it was advertising. Because Key and Peele were in that commercial. That was funny. Like, those commercials I didn't like. Well, because uh, you think, oh, it's going to be something. Then you find out what the commercial is really advertising. It's like, oh, that's kind of a Debbie Downer. It's like, oh, this is a fun commercial for Squarespace. Ugh. And you had, like, Bladder control commercials. They don't belong in Super Bowl! Like, the, I think it was like the death commercial they had a couple years ago. That was a Debbie Downer a couple years ago. That doesn't belong in the Super Bowl. Uh, the Shot Top commercial with uh, TJ Miller. I like him. He's a very good stand up. That was a decent little commercial with that. Uh, I, no. I said. Prius was the one with Van Halen. I think Acura was the one with Van Halen. Prius, I forgot what that was. But I think Prius was a fun one. The Dallas Shave Club was kind of like, wow. They have a commercial Super Bowl with the old shaver. And his wife came in. That was like an okay one. Because I've, I've seen Dallas Shave commercials. Mostly on VH1 Classic and MTV Hits. But not on regular television. So it's kind of interesting to see him on there. Uh, the mini, the, the the mini commercial was decent too. The mini, the mini Cooper call commercial was a little okay. The Turbo Tax with uh Anthony Hopkins was kind of funny with the uh, Anthony Hopkins being interviewed like saying like Anthony Hopkins you don't sell out. Well, I'm advertising Turbo Tax, but it's free. I'm not selling anything. It's free. And he had like all these like. Little cheap plugs with the dog wearing a Turbo Tax sweater. So I was like, no funny commercial. The, the LG TV commercial with uh, Liam Nielsen was okay. It's one of those, it was one of those other commercials you think, oh, this commercial looks good. What's it advertising? LG. That's, there was a lot of those tonight. The Heinz commercial is probably everyone's going to be talking about. Uh, with the dog set to uh, living with. Living, I can't live living here without you. The dogs felt out like weenie dogs, and they had all the Heinz ketchup and mustard. <laughs> that was an interesting fun commercial. Kind of a clever commercial. The Jeep commercial with the 4x4, that was okay. Some of the worst commercials of the night, like some of the bad commercials. The Sophie commercial, stupid, pointless, not belonging. The Cloverfield commercial. For that Cloverfield movie. Worst movie commercial in the entire Super Bowl, in my mind. Uh, PayPal didn't belong in the Super Bowl. Advil didn't belong in the Super Bowl. Quick and Loan didn't belong. Pokemon didn't belong in that Super Bowl. The Butterfinger one was kind of stupid, too. 
So those are the ones I uh, didn't like. I probably forgot a couple. But that's the one I could remember and write down and read my own handwriting. The ones I liked, disliked. The ones I thought were great. The ones I thought were just okay. The ones I thought were just bad. So there you go. Super Bowl 50. Kind of an up and down success for the NFL. With the halftime show being okay. The game being not a lot of exciting. Especially if the last year's Super Bowl was very exciting. And what we could be seeing, the final game of Peyton Manning's career, even though he hasn't said anything like he hasn't, he's going to take some time and reflect to make a final decision on retirement. But it looks like we've seen outside of the Super Bowl that we have Marshawn Lynch retiring. So there you go. That's my thoughts on Super Bowl 50. Yeah, yeah the avocado one was the one in space. And it was even what I saw before Super Bowl, the Mountain Dew kickstart of Puppy Monkey Baby. I saw the one a few days ago. That's not new. Maybe kind of new. And I saw it. My dad can't stop laughing. Puppy Monkey Baby. That was kind of like the, the most out there commotion. I saw it, saw it a few days ago. I think it was like a, like a lip sync battle. The Death Wish caused by Intuit was okay too. Looking back on it. At the, it was kind of funny to see that, like a small town commercial getting an ad. That was kind of cool. And the Pepsi commercial before the halftime show. The only good thing about the halftime show was kind of funny, with, kind of fun with Janelle Monae doing it. That was like a little like setback, like a little look at the past, including dancing to express yourself by Madonna, which was ironic as Madonna was a spokesperson for Pepsi doing it like a prayer era until that video got her fired because of anti. Waste on stuff. The Colgate commercial was like, Ugh, the every drop counts, the stop, the save water was just okay. Oh, the Prius one was a getaway call. That was a fun one. That was, that was a Prius one that I saw. The Dollar Shave Car was kind of fun. And the Kia one with Christopher Walken was just, yeah. And like the Demichelob one was stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I should have thought the Maryland one wasn't good. I'm reading the internet right now as I'm looking. The Snickers one was decent, though. I didn't like it. And I didn't talk about the Chris, Chris, the Kessalupa. Thank God I, I pre-ordered it, but I didn't buy it. Some people didn't like the dogs or the Snickers one. Or the Heinz one. Maybe the Heinz one, maybe. I bet you, like, I like the Heinz one. I bet you a lot of people may not like it. But that's... My thoughts on the game, the commercials, and the halftime show. Up and down, but congrats to the Broncos. Uh, when I came to my predictions, I predicted the postseason action. I'm um, 9-2. and two. And ironically, the two games I got wrong, I picked against the Broncos. Because <laughs> I thought field goals cannot win you playoff games. And guess what? Field goals did win them a football game tonight, and the defense did too. The defense being form instead of against them, like Super 48. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. See you later, everybody. And for my football fans, see you next season. Yeah.